Hi, I'm Ethan. I love muzzleloading. Today we're traveling to Lexington, Kentucky to check out the 2023 Contemporary Long Rifle Association annual show. Events like this are a great way to catch up with so many of the online friends that we have in the muzzleloading community and it's really great to put names and faces together. Um, it's kind of a weird dynamic but it's a, it's a great dynamic to have spoken to so many of you over the past years and then uh, to finally meet you in person and, and see the real person that I've been talking to. It's just a really incredible experience. This year I did things a little bit differently. My father and I shared a table exhibiting some of our folk art work that we do. It's really separate from I Love Muzzleloading, but the table provided a great way and a, and a great meeting point to hang out. And uh, it was kind of through the show, I could tell people I'll be at my table in row G, which is where we were. And it just served as a nice meeting point uh, to catch up with people as they traveled through the show. The only downside to this, if you can even call it a downside, is that I couldn't see most of the show because I was at my table for so much of the weekend. So while I did try to get out in the early morning and the late evening of each day of the show to film some of the tables, what you're seeing in the video is by no means everything that was at the show. It's such a large show. Uh, it's in such a large exhibit hall that you can spend all day, both days, working your way down the aisles. And I guarantee you, you would see pictures after the event that were something that you missed, even though you thought you got through the entire show.
That's one of the great things about an event like the CLA show is there's so much muzzleloading culture and there's so much of the muzzleloading community jam-packed uh, into these tables. I mean, you could spend half an hour looking at every one of the eight foot tables that are at the show. It's just that jam-packed with neat stuff to look at. In case you haven't checked out some of our other videos from the CLA show, uh, it can kind of look like it's exclusively a shopping experience, but it is still an educational event. Throughout the displays and the tables at the events, you're gonna find large educationally focused displays where you'll see full collections, full lifetimes of different gun makers or gun making schools laid out, both contemporary and original, uh, which really serves as a great way to kind of pause through kind of the hustle and bustle of the show. Uh, you can go through your tables where you're talking with artists, you're talking with craftspeople in a real direct one-on-one -on -one way. And then you kind of come to a breath, really, of these uh, educational displays where you can go through a couple hundred years of muzzleloading history and, uh, and really just pause and think about where we came from. And, and then you can kind of shift back into the show of the contemporary work here and see where we're at now. And I think it creates a great comparison as you're moving through the show to see that contemporary, to see the original, back to the contemporary and then original again. And then on top of the education displays and the contemporary artisans, a um, section of the show is devoted and dedicated to original pieces, from original muzzle loaders to clothing items and the accoutrements that go along with all the time periods that are represented through the muzzleloading era. So it's really neat, I think, to go through these tables and, and analyze and, and pick up a few original items here and there. I walked by a couple that had quite a few original locks from the early 1800s, which was really neat to see. It was really neat to pick up and analyze those to see what was being produced at the time. While it's, you don't see that very often today, using those original locks in a contemporary piece, it is something that we have done in the past that we've talked about a little bit on some early 20th century pieces. So it's neat to see that stuff still circulating through the community. Uh, and it's still, you know, wonderful, I think, to know that you can access and, and maybe even own an original piece of that history. It might be, you know, a stretch for many of us, especially in my age group, to own an original muzzleloader from the 18th or 17th or even the 19th century. But if you're interested in that history, you can still pick up and start collecting some of those smaller items that go along with it as you work your way up uh, to owning an original long rifle. I'd like to thank each and every one of you that stopped by my table or stopped me during this show to talk. Uh, it's really energizing, like I say a lot in these videos, to go out to an event and meet so many of you. I spend a lot of time here on the farm uh, making things and doing research on my own independently. Uh, so I do get excited and I do really enjoy getting out to meet so many of you.
We'll have one other video coming out from the show here. We'll be sitting down with Wayne Estes and Tim Cosby to discuss their contemporary long rifle display, which covers contemporary long rifle building from the 1940s up into today and highlights some of the changes and some of the schools and some of the builders that are still active today and kind of shows that progression from then to now, which I'm really excited to share with you. It was a, really a one-of-a-kind display, I think, this year, and it was uh, you know, really special to see all of these rifles put together and put in such an important context. So check that out on the channel if it's not on there already.
We'll have one other video coming out from this show here. We'll be sitting down with Wayne Estes and Tim Cosby to discuss their contemporary long rifle display, which covers contemporary long rifle building from the 1940s up into today and highlights some of the changes and some of the schools and some of the builders that are still active today and kind of shows that progression from then to now, which I'm really excited to share with you. It was a, really a one of a kind display, I think, this year and it was uh, you know, really special to see all of these rifles put together and put in such an important context. So check that out on the channel if it's not on there already. Once again, I'm Ethan, I love muzzleloading. If you'd like to learn more about this or anything else related to muzzleloading, please visit ilovemuzzleloading.com and check out the Contemporary Long Rifle Association website. We'll have a link in the description of the video. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next time.